Your coworkers cannot talk about things they don't know. Filling just one of these secrets will make you the target of office gossip, the subject of workplace drama, and destroy <gasps> your professional reputation. Yet I can guarantee you've probably told your coworkers at least three of these secrets. Because most people never learn the 10 secrets they should never tell their coworkers until it's too late. But I got you, Bastie, and I'm spilling the tea today so you don't accidentally spill it on yourself. We have to start with the obvious fact that you're not the only one spilling secrets at work. Undoubtedly, you have at least one coworker, or even your boss, who has confided in you. What do you do with that information? My office nemesis made a mistake with this information back in my corporate days. Vivian had gotten a juicy political insight from her boss, who was the top executive at the company. One of the executives was about to get fired. Vivian not only wanted to show she was in the know, she happened to openly hate this executive and welcome to the opportunity to bring him down. But this was the beginning of Vivian's downfall, which low-key I enjoyed watching Karma do its job. Vivian shared her insider information with a few people that she wanted to impress. Then it became the buzz of office gossip and fell into the wrong hands. Vivian was a notorious corporate pygmy and she had created a collection of adversaries, which is cool I wasn't alone. Now, one of these adversaries saw this mishandling information as the perfect political opportunity to take Vivian down. The top executive was made aware of the fact that Vivian betrayed his confidence and instantly the trust he had in Vivian was decimated and the precarious amount of power she was provided was lost, which made everyone at the company avoid Vivian the way they would stepping into one of those weird puddles that happens in the middle of the day in New York City. I don't even know what's going on with those. When you spill someone else's secret, you are going to be the one who ends up burned. So don't do it. Which brings me to the next secret you should never tell your coworkers and another pick me tale because apparently it's our theme for today. This one was targeted at me. At one of my early career jobs, my work bestie happened to be a dude. We will not get all toxic and call him my work husband. Anyways, me and my work bestie took breaks together and he initiated a strategic high impact project that promoted my team services, which was a huge mutual win. We also both happened to be in serious long-term relationships with people outside of work, so there was no romantic vibes. One day I was chatting with another one of our colleagues. Let's call her Gia because she had the mean girl from Full House vibes going. And she says to me, you know, people think you and him are hooking up. Was this rumor really floating around? Probably because a woman can't be friends with a man at work without people speculating about it. But also because I suspect Gia or a member of her pygmy pack started it. Heck, she probably brought it to me so she could add it to the office gossip. Because beyond that, there was zero point in her bringing it to me. There was also nothing I could do or say to prove that me and my work bestie were not in fact having a torrid love affair. If you are truly concerned about what is being said behind a coworker's back, do not bring it to them. Discredit the person who's gossiping about them instead. Question. As I told you about Gia and Vivian, have you been assuming that they knew I didn't like them? The thing is, neither of them knew, at least not explicitly. Unlike Gia and Vivian, despite my personal feelings about them, I wasn't trying to take anyone down. Even when their behavior was particularly shady, I trusted Karma to do its job so I could do mine. Them knowing I didn't like them would have added fuel to their pick me fire and it would have escalated the drama I did not want. I even channeled Pavlov and used positive reinforcement with them, especially Vivian. Nothing disarms a toxic coworker faster than kindness, especially when it's not what they're giving you. Whenever I had to collaborate with Vivian, I made myself conspicuously easy to work with, making it almost impossible for her to sabotage my work or obstruct my work in any way. I would even email compliments about the progress she was making and she she did not know what to do with that. It was actually kind of funny to watch. The next is a secret highly accountable professionals reveal even though it costs them. When I tell you what it is, you are going to immediately spot the problem, even if it's a secret you spilled before. So, face palm warning. Do not tattle on yourself. When you make a mistake that no one noticed, don't point it out to everyone. If you got in trouble with your boss, you don't have to tell your coworkers about it. There is zero shame in messing up, making mistakes, and learning and growing from it. But it doesn't mean you need to broadcast it. Especially when the Gia's and Vivian's of the world are going to be asking you, what did he just say to you? To feed their drama llama for free. Speaking of feeding your toxic coworkers drama llama, this next thing is something you absolutely need to keep secret from your coworkers. Because if you don't, the biggest stressors in your 
your life are going to become office gossip. Your coworkers should know about as much about your personal life as they know about quantum mechanics, unless they're all physicists or something. They may be familiar with the term. Perhaps they have a vague idea of what it is, even a basic understanding of it. But you should not be the corporate Kardashian oversharing every detail of your life. Trust me, the last thing you want is for Gia to know about the breakup that you're going through or other stress so that she can be talking to everyone about it. From the conversations that we've had in the comments, I know a lot of you don't really know what the lines are, and sometimes we don't find those boundaries between work and life until they're breached. There's a really simple question that can help you get clarity on if it's something you should share before you say it. Do I want my coworkers speculating about this? If the answer is no, keep it on the down low. Ha, that rhymed. Especially when it comes to personal health info. Whether it's physical health, emotional health, psychological health, or spiritual health, this is a line I know a lot of you are walking based on the questions that I get during my weekly Instagram AMA sessions. Sometimes we have ailments that we need to be open about in order to navigate, especially if you need accommodations or it's obvious, like when I broke my foot falling down on the sidewalk because I was texting. But does everyone need to know about it and specifically what happened? In most cases, I think health info is on a needs to know basis. For instance, I had absolutely no issue talking to my boss about how my anxiety was impacting me at work, but I never would have wanted for Vivian to know about it. Not because I was embarrassed or ashamed of my anxiety. It goes back to what I said about arming your adversaries because Vivian was 1000% the type of person who would have tried to weaponize my anxiety about me, which speaks to her character, not mine, but still would have resulted in me having to deal with unnecessary drama. Similarly, you do not need to make break room confession to your coworkers like, I'm $25,000 in credit card debt. This is something similar to what one of my clients accidentally shared with her coworkers, absolutely oblivious to the implications. She figured most people had things like credit card debt and student loans, but by the time it got to her boss, she realized spilling that particular secret was a massive mistake. When it comes to cash, most people become Goldilocks. If you're perceived as having too much money, people think you don't need things like promotions or pay increases or career advancing opportunities. If you have too little, you're perceived as risky or irresponsible. Spoiler alert, when it comes to money, I don't think that there's any amount that people think is just right. Which is why, whether it's the price of your new shoes, the balance on your student loan, or the amount that you're saving up for a luxurious holiday or to buy a new home, keep those numbers secret from your coworkers. This is particularly true when you're looking for a new job. I think most people already know to keep it a secret from their coworkers when they're looking for a new job and go out of their way to hide when they're interviewing with another company. But what about promotions? One mistake I see professionals making every day is telling everyone about their career ambitions. This can cause so many problems. First, your ambitious coworker is now going to see you as competition. And if they play dirty politics, they can sabotage your work, undermine you in meetings, and they'll take every opportunity they can to discredit you. Unfortunately, it can also trigger a lot of casual gossip, some that's very harmful, like talking about how power hungry you are, what you're willing to do to get promoted. And if you get passed over for that promotion, your toxic coworker is going to relish in your misery because they love a downfall. You should be unapologetically ambitious at work, but not everyone needs to know about it. Communicate your career goals and your career ambitions with the people that are going to be instrumental in advancing your career. Everyone else can mind their own business. Similarly, when you're being given opportunities, and especially when career advancing opportunities are being created just for you, or you're creating opportunities for yourself, keep these quiet to your competitive coworkers. I have heard way too many stories about dirty politics being deployed to snatch opportunities away from the talented professionals who deserve them. That said, no matter how well you protect these 10 secrets, sometimes they're going to get out. Which is why if you're not engaging in office politics, keeping all of these secrets is not going to matter. The good news is corporate politics don't need to be dirty and they don't need to be complicated. You just need to know the five easy rules to win office politics that I'm going to tell you about right here.